Visa is up 30% since last quarter's earnings results where the stock had bottomed, signifying the market's optimism behind this business, which now puts them at a market cap of $477 billion, a PE of 33 and a dividend yield of just less than 1%. And now it's time to analyze their Q1 2023 results so that us value investors can get a good idea of where things stand with Visa and whether or not it's a buy or a sell at these current levels now that the bottom is in. So make sure to stick around to the end of the video as we'll discuss all that and more and Today's episode how's it going welcome everything investing i hope you're having a great day as always we will go through the fundamentals of this business we'll talk about the trajectory of this business you know we'll take it all into account and then we'll produce an evaluation using our intrinsic value calculator and then conclude off this video with our investment rating for visa so if you do like this content make sure to like the video subscribe and also make sure to comment your thoughts in the comment section below with all that out of the way let's jump into the analysis all right so visa's q1 2023 earnings you know let's talk a little bit about what we know coming into this quarter here and that's that they're actually changing up management here they're appointing ryan mckinnerney as the ceo effective february 1st of 2023 and the current ceo will assume the role of executive chairman in replace of that ceo role there but they're not expecting big changes from from the new CEO here, it's really just going to be business as usual. If you look at what happened here for Q1 here of 2023, you know, on a constant currency perspective, we're seeing some good things. Payment volume is up, cross border volume is up, process transactions, that's all up. And that's even the case, even on a nominal currency perspective. You know, if we take a look at the total cards that they have, Visa has a total of 4.1 billion cards made up of, you know, 1.2 billion credit cards, 2.8 billion debit cards. And these figures, as you can see here, have been growing year over year as well. So you can expect their sales top line and and bottom line should increase as they collect those fees on the back end. Now, if we compare their newly reported payment volume results compared to last quarter's results, we can see here they have tapered off just a little bit. 7% now from last quarter's 10%, 17% last quarter, 11% this quarter for their credit cards. And then debit cards is 3%. And that was not much of a taper off from last quarter's 4% growth there. Of course, we're looking at these results on a constant currency perspective. But nevertheless, the business is still growing here. And that's exactly what you'd want to see. Now, that is going to translate directly over to their revenue results here you know for this quarter we're seeing growth across all their segments here leads them with 10.7 billion dollars worth of gross revenues then they do have to deduct for their client incentives here which is growing as well and of course that's baked into their business model here but that leaves them with net revenues of 7.9 let's just call it 8 billion dollars for this quarter you know 12 percent growth on a year over year basis and of course it's always great to see when top line is growing but you really want to see if that's translating well over to their bottom line and well if we take a look at their consolidated state of operations here you know for this quarter like we mentioned that eight billion dollars worth of revenues you know once we deduct for all of our expenses here total operating expenses of 2.8 billion dollars for this quarter leaves them with about five billion dollars worth of operating income you know meaning they have some healthy margins here but if we look at this from a quarter over quarter perspective it's actually flat not much has changed there despite the increase in revenues and that's simply because those operating expenses did increase by the same rate there and so you're left with the same operating income figure. But if we do compare this to last year, this time they had only $4.7 billion worth. And that was on $2.2 billion of expenses on the $7 billion worth of revenue. So we've seen a nice increase to their margins, at least on a year over year perspective. Great to see from any business. And now let's take a look at this from a liquidity point of view here, $13 billion worth of cash. They also have some restricted cash and some investment securities there. So if we just round all of them up together, let's just assume they have about 15 to $16 billion worth of liquid cash on that balance sheet that they can use well if we compare that over to their debt since that is what we're interested in on, on this channel here you know no short-term debt but 20 billion dollars worth of long-term debt so a little bit of a net debt position here for visa but i mean that's almost what this business is about you know of course they're a huge credit business here so that means they have a lot of deferred revenue and so it takes them a little bit of extra time to actually recoup the money that's due to them so i think this is something you can overlook here from a balance sheet perspective now if we look at this from a free cash flow perspective here for this quarter basically $4 billion worth of free cash flow was produced as they don't really have a lot of capital spending there. They don't have to spend a lot of money to maintain or sustain the business or to even grow the business to that point. So, you know, $4 billion basically in free cash flow. What do they do to reward shareholders here? Well, they spend three of it repurchasing shares, another $2 billion worth basically of cash there repaying down some debt. And then they also do pay out a dividend there as well, you know, using debt and cash from the balance sheet to assist with that. But like we mentioned earlier with Visa's liquidity perspective in mind, not Nothing to worry investors.
investors there on that end. Not at this current point, at least. It's very healthy fundamentally here. And as you can see here, if we look at their operating income over the last few years, you know, nothing but growth really here. Even throughout this current global economic hardship that we're going through, you know, even with tightened consumer spending and things like that, they're still able to grow over the last few years as people still need to rely on credit, which is why this business model is, you know, absolutely proven. So that puts them at an operating income of about 18, almost $19 billion by the end of 2022. So if we expect that they can expand on that into 2023, let's just assume they can achieve about $20 billion worth of operating income. You know, if we plug that into our calculator here, if we expect a 10% return, they do currently pay a dividend. And if we expect a constant rate of 4% growth over the next five years, that drops down to about 3% on a 35 PE like they're currently trading at. The stock should be actually worth about $340 from a very, very average scenario here with just modest growth over the next decade. Now, the stock is currently trading at $231 per share. So that means Visa is decently undervalued right now if we expect these growth metrics to play out. Now, if we expect that Visa can actually improve on their fundamentals even further than that, and they can grow for at least, you know, 8% for the first five years, then that drops down to about 5% average growth on a 40 PE. The stock would absolutely rip back up to almost $500 per share, you know, more than a double from where we are currently, you know, assuming these growth metrics there. Now, of course, this is taken into consideration the most optimistic scenario here. If we look at the stock chart, it actually only has ever topped out at $250 per share. But if you zoom in and even with the global economy, you know, struggling a little bit here, they only ever were down about 28% from those highs now. And they've already recovered, you know, 30% of that decline now. So, you know, down just 7% in a very challenging environment right now from those all time highs. So you can expect that stock there is definitely seeking those all time highs. But we always have to take into consideration the worst case scenario as well. And that's if this business couldn't even grow for the next 10 years, you know, and they're only able to just maintain what they have. Of course, this is a very unrealistic scenario here, but I want to give it to you to add some context here. And if we look at this on a 25 PE, the stock would only be worth $206 at that point. And if you look at it, we're trading at $231 there. And that's assuming again, if we had 0% growth, that's still what this business would be worth. If that puts some light or adds some color to the current stock price here, you know, we're not trading far off of where this business would be worth if we did not grow for the next decade, you know, and that's why I'm going to give this business a current investment rating of about a seven at this current point in time. They are up 30% from those lows down there at, you know, $175 or so that would have been at least an eight rating at that point. But now that we have increased and we are only 7% off that all time high there, that means we've just increased the risk. But again, owning this business at about $200 per share, you know, that just means that if the business couldn't grow any further over the next decade, you know, that's where your shares would be worth. So of course, anything under here is a great margin and safety investment. But that's the analysis for today. Of course, leave your thoughts in the comment section below. Also, make sure to like the video and subscribe. And with all that, I'll catch you on the next one.